Hey, this is Stu, and today we're going to talk about lens distortion, an all-new effect in Red Giant's VFX suite. What is lens distortion? Well, it's really easy to see what it is and why it's a cool and important cinematic thing in this really beautiful shot from Seth Worley's film, Darker Colors. He shot this film on anamorphic lenses. Uh, this is one of the wider ones. And as you can see, it's got distortion. And what do we mean by distortion? Well, we mean barrel or radial distortion is the technical type of distortion that we're seeing here. In the real world, this door, is a straight line, and so is this, and so are these would have been straight. But the camera paints them in a distorted way. And this makes doing visual effects kind of hard because our computer-generated cameras don't see things this way. So if I create a new camera and a new solid and make that solid 3D, you can see the way the camera sees this layer, it's always going to paint the edges as straight lines. And this would even be true if I went into those camera settings and picked like a crazy wide angle lens. So 15 mil would be crazy wide, like fisheye wide on a full frame 35 millimeter camera. And yet here I've adjusted my camera to be a crazy wide angle lens. If I look at it from the top view, you can see just how crazy wide my angle of view is. It's like 90 degrees. And yet through the lens, as I orbit around this solid, even though you can see the kind of linear distortion that line will never bend. And yet when we're filming a scene, we don't have to go anywhere near that wide to start to get that type of distortion. And depending on your opinion about lenses and how they work and whatever, you might think of lens distortion as like a problem to be solved. In the world of film, we have a different point of view about this. We love lens distortion. Like Seth chose these anamorphic lenses for all kinds of characteristics that they have, none of them having to do with razor sharpness or straight lines. We love the kind of veil of unreality that comes from certain kinds of lenses that have character and interesting qualities to them. And so even today, people are shooting big fancy movies with lenses that date back to the 70s. And they've got all kinds of issues, including distortion. So when you're doing visual effects, it becomes really important to match those properties. You don't want to make a creative decision about removing distortion from the lens, but you need to render 3D geometry or do 2D tracking or two and a half D effects using a computer camera that only knows about straight lines and you need to get that CGI into distorted footage. So this is where lens distortion comes in. I'm gonna apply it to Seth's shot here and you see the beautiful user interface for this effect. It starts off with a tool for drawing lines. Let's delete this for a second and let's talk about effects that do kind of similar things here. Let's go to optic compensation okay this is a nice simple effect comes free with after effects and it has this field of view control which is kind of weird because as we saw before like the field of view well really it's angle of view of that very wide lens was close to 90 degrees now here we have a thing that like as we increase it towards 90 we get this very bent image so uh, I think this term is maybe a little more algorithmically correct than it is real world correct but anyway you can use this effect to reverse lens distortion. Look at that, I can straighten out those lines. Kinda. I actually have a little bit of trouble with this one getting all of the lines to be straight. If I straighten these ones, this one's still bent, this one is still curved back here. This is the problem with this effect. It's too simplistic for real world lenses. It only has one parameter. It's a nice way to creatively add or remove lens distortion but it's not good enough for visual effects. So instead of moving a slider or moving a bunch of sliders around until you straighten out these lines, we wanted to create kind of the red giant experience around removing and profiling lens distortion. And the way we do that is just by drawing lines. We know these lines are supposed to be straight, so let's tell lens distortion that they're supposed to be straight. So I'm just gonna start drawing a line here. And you can see that as soon as I have three points down, these little buttons light up, but I'm not quite ready to click them just yet. I wanna keep informing lens distortion about this line. At the end of the line, I'm gonna double click to end that line, and now I can start drawing a new one. I'm gonna draw a line down this side of the shot. Double click to end it, and I'm gonna do one more. Uh, and I don't like where that last point ended up, so I'm gonna grab the move point tool here and uh, just kind of tweak it into position. And by the way, like this is also an important part of why we made lens distortion the way we did. We know that you know, on a big fancy movie, they're gonna shoot lens grids and have all this information about what lenses they shot, but a lot of times a freelance visual effects artist gets a shot dumped in their lap and they don't know anything about how it was filmed. So 
they're going to rely purely on the clues that are within the footage itself to tell them about lens distortion. So now I can click this button here, remove distortion. And you can see that the lines straightened out. If I slide the shot down here, you can see that I've actually added pixels to the outside edge of it. I've bent and I've kind of pin cushioned the outer profile of the shot and I've straightened out my lines. But removing the distortion is actually not what I want to do. Like we said, we want to keep the distortion. We just want to add things into that distorted space. So that's what this other button here is for. Create undistortion pre-comp. And I'm going to click that. And what you can see is a couple interesting things happen. First of all, the distortion is back. But second of all, we've got an extra layer here. We actually just created a lens distortion pipeline. So what we started off with here was just this footage in this comp. And what we wound up with when we press that button is these two pre-comps. And if I go in here, you can see I've got an oversized pre-comp. It actually is larger than the image started with. By the way, we're in an anamorphic comp here. These pixels are not square, and that's just fine with the lens distortion. And what you've got here is you've got a copy of the lens distortion effect. The distortion values are down here, and invert is unchecked, which means we're removing the distortion. So this is our undistorted source. That goes into this comp called undistorted work. And the reason for that is that this is the place where we might want to do some tracking or whatever, and we want to track undistorted footage. So we've got the undistorted footage, and we've got the place where we're going to do our work. And critically, what you'll notice is that our uh, layer in here that is the footage that is undistorted with the straight lines is a guide layer. And what that means is that if I just make like a comp size solid here and apply, let's say, grid like this, and then I'll move down to the comp we started in, the darker colors comp. What you can see now is the distorted grid on top of our original footage. And that's the key thing. It's on top of the original footage. This is our original footage here. You'll notice there's no effects on it. So these pixels are untouched. This is the raw plate, the original footage, not messed with in any way. And our graphics or CG that we're adding on top of it have the correct distortion. They line up perfectly but we are not softening the background at all by undistorting and then redistorting those background pixels. So this is the critical lens distortion workflow that After Effects visual effects artists have been using for many, many years. I helped uh, pioneer this technique back at the orphanage and it's been written about a lot since then and it's a great way to do it, but what it was always missing was a really robust way of profiling a complex lens and that's what lens distortion is adding to the process here as well as this automation of creating these pre-comps for you. So undistort the footage, do your work in that undistorted space, then reunite it with the original footage back in your original comp. So let's see what that might look like. I got a street scene here and a little camera move. This is shot with the iPhone 11 Pro and this is another lens that is actually a little bit tricky to profile. But lens distortion luckily can make easy work of it. So the first step is to pick the things in the shot that we think are straight. So I'll just start drawing my lines and let's just jump right to create that undistorted pre-comp. You can see my layer got a little bigger there. We created those pre-comps, so let's dig back into them. And this I love seeing because this really shows you how you couldn't do this with the optics compensation plugin because look at this mustachey distortion from the iPhone 11 Pro. In fact, if you saw my tutorial on how I did my fun bullet time nerf dart shot, you know the punchline to this, which is that even with the kind of distortion that you get from just something as simple as the phone in your pocket, it's enough to fool the After Effects camera tracker into not being able to track that scene. And what you saw in that tutorial is that the first time I tried tracking the scene, it didn't work. But after I used lens distortion, it did. That's because the camera tracker is expecting straight lines. So you can see where this is going. Let's apply the After Effects camera tracker to this. Now again, the reason this works is that there's this extra pre-comp here. So we've got the undistort comp here with the effect on it. Here's the distortion values, and then we've got the work comp, where the After Effects camera tractor is dutifully tracking all these pixels in 4K, by the way. This is 4K iPhone footage. Now, I won't make you wait for the camera tracker to finish, but here's the result. All right, I've got some good tracking points here. Let's kind of check them over time. Looks pretty solid. Let's try creating something in the scene, maybe kind of back here at this depth. Create a solid in camera. All right, so now I've got a 3D camera, and let's just check out that camera, actually, the camera that it created. Yeah, so look at that. The angle of view, 95.97 degrees. That's a very wide lens. And that's actually a little bit wider than the iPhone lens really is, but that's because in this undistorted space, we've got to account for these pincushiony corners that pop out here. So 
typically after you remove lens distortion, you wind up with a wider angle of view on your shot than you would have had uh, if you hadn't removed it. And that's totally normal and fine. That's great. So of course, it wouldn't be a stew demo unless I had my robot. Let's get Team Robot in here. Make him 3D. And I'm going to take my solid here, copy the position, paste it onto the robot. Now he's, ooh, he's tiny. Okay, so let's scale him up. And now, since I made it a freeze frame, I can stretch him out to the length of the comp. Okay, so now here's the beginning of the shot. And at the end, we're kind of tilting up and looking at the robot. It's kind of fun. I think this is working, but the magic really hasn't happened yet until we get into the last comp. Now we've got our distorted robot comped into the scene. So let's RAM preview that and see what that looks like. Of course, now I really want to mat him behind that foreground uh, pole there, but we've accurately removed and reintroduced the lens distortion or compositing or layer into the 3D scene correctly. So let's uh, let's take a look at a situation that would be far less forgiving than this. All right, so here I've got some crazy wide angle footage. So let's see what lens distortion has to say about this. Hmm, interesting. So lens distortion is having a hard time finishing that line for me. And it's given me this little suggestion here. Consider switching lens type to fisheye. That's because as I'm drawing these points onto the image, lens distortion is actually trying to solve for the distortion. That's why that line gets all nice and curvy. But it's having trouble doing it with the standard lens type, and it thinks maybe I should switch to fisheye. So let's take the suggestion, and sure enough, the line comes back, and I can start drawing additional lines if I want. By the way, it doesn't matter what frame you're on when you trace the line. So you can trace one line from one frame and another line from another frame. I don't think we necessarily need to do that in this example because we have so many wonderful straight lines in the shot, but it's just a pro tip. I'm just gonna again switch right to create. Well, no, let's, let's remove distortion first just because it's fun to see. Yeah, so look what happens. So all the lines straighten out, that's looking pretty great. And let's click the other button. Okay, so now we're back to our workflow. I've got fisheye footage redistort. So let's go into there and see what that looks like. Whoa, all right, well this is crazy. What just happened here? Well, it's a fisheye lens, man. This is what a computer camera, a pinhole camera that can only render straight lines would see if it could see out to the corners of this image. And it, it kind of makes sense if you think about it. It's a weird view, but it's cool. Like, because as you go out, from the center, you're seeing more and more and more of the scene. It stands to reason that the corners are farther from the center than the edge. <laughs> and so the corners are seeing way much more of the scene. It's actually one of the reasons that barrel distortion is a pleasing visual thing a lot of times, because uh, as nice as straight lines look on architecture, they don't necessarily always look great on people. So, hey, look at that, look how cool that is. So guess what we get to do now? We're gonna do a little tracking on the shot, but instead of using a camera tracker, we're gonna use Kingpin Tracker. So, oh, actually, let's talk about one other thing. The resolution of this composite is huge. It's 7K, okay? Now, that's, again, because we want to reunite these pixels back with the composite when we're done. Not these exact pixels, but pixels we're gonna add to it. And because we need these big corners, we need a lot of padding. It's possible to need so much padding that you can actually run out of memory in After Effects depending on your setup. So we actually have a maximum layer width and it's set to 8K. You can crank it up if you want, but 8K is a pretty awesome, big working resolution to work on this uh, 4K plate. So let's grab a little sign here and we're gonna apply Kingpin Tracker to the sign and we'll just start lining it up. Hey, look at this cool new feature in Kingpin Tracker. We've got these perspective lines here. This is actually new in the same VFX suite update that includes lens distortion. We also added these nice perspective lines uh, which actually are really handy for um, setting things up because you can grab them and move them. So you can grab this ledge here and move it and in fact, if you can even see the, there you go, you can see the vanishing point, you can grab these little vanishing points too. So it actually makes it a little bit easier to set up some corner pin situations. Oh, I guess I gotta decide if I'm doing the big sign or the little sign. Let's do the little sign. And just mark this frame so I can find it again easy. Let's uh, select our layer to track, which is gonna be our undistort layer, and just start tracking. All right, that ought to be enough. Let's check that out. Dig back into our shot here and you can see, yeah, it's lining up really well. And again, remember, I'm reuniting this lens distorted version of my corner pin track 
on top of the original footage without any quality loss to the original. And if you want to go outside of After Effects and do like a real 3D pipeline with 3D rendered animation from Cinema 4D or whatever you're using, that's cool too. All you got to do is render out this undistorted composition, create a new background plate to use in your 3D application. Your 3D application will love it because everything in there will be straight lines. You can do your camera tracking there or After Effects, whichever you like. Then take your renders and bring them into that work comp. You can preview them on top of the guide layer, and then they'll be losslessly reunited with your original distorted footage, just like the elements that we created in After Effects. So that's Red Giant Lens Distortion. Profile and remove any kind of lens distortion from any kind of lens, or create a full visual effects pipeline for properly handling lens distortion at the push of a single button.